Hi, thank you for joining. This is the second segment of the Frontline Staff Toolkit for Outpatient Hemodialysis Facilities. This toolkit was created as a resource for frontline staff who are having frequent interactions with patients and providing direct care in outpatient hemodialysis facilities. It includes short video slide decks intended to be used as educational resources. They can be viewed as a group or individually as time allows. Evidence-based practices and existing CDC recommendations for preventing infections in the dialysis setting, as well as observations of clinical practice, are the foundations for this toolkit. COVID-19 recommendations are summarized in the Interim Additional Guidance for Infection Prevention and Control Recommendations for patients with suspected or confirmed COVID-19 in outpatient hemodialysis facilities. This guidance was developed from the information currently available about COVID-19. This approach will be refined and updated as more information becomes available and as response needs change in the United States. It is important to stay informed about COVID-19 to prevent in introduction and minimize spread of COVID-19 in your dialysis facility. We encourage you to use this toolkit along with other COVID-19 dialysis specific resources and ongoing activities in your clinic. The guidance and additional resources are available on the CDC webpage. The video you are watching is tips for outpatient hemodialysis facilities during COVID-19, personal protective equipment. This video will highlight some of the basic personal protective equipment used in dialysis. We will also be discussing some more specific PPE practices for coronavirus disease 2019, so patients can continue to receive dialysis treatments. Let's get started by refreshing our knowledge on some general personal protective equipment used in dialysis. Remember, PPE protects you, the healthcare worker, from infectious material such as blood or body fluids and helps prevent the transmission of pathogens between patients. At dialysis clinics, gowns, gloves, nose, mouth, and eye protection are needed during initiation and discontinuation of treatment, as well as other times when spurting or spattering of blood, body fluids, potentially contaminated substances, or chemicals might occur. Some examples of these other times include when you manipulate a vascular access, handle labs, give medications, or clean equipment, just to name a few. And remember, if your PPE becomes soiled or contaminated with blood, body fluids, or other materials such as dialysate, change it immediately. Soiled PPE increases the risk of spreading pathogens between patients. Let's talk about gowns. Gowns are an important part of the everyday PPE worn in dialysis. Gowns protect you by preventing contamination of clothing with blood, body fluids, and other potentially infectious material, and protects the patients by preventing pathogens from contaminating your clothing and spreading between patients. To ensure you are protected, make sure dialysis gowns are worn appropriately. Gowns may open in the back or front, but must be closed in front during use for patient care. Gown sleeves should be worn down at the wrist and not pushed up towards the elbow. Note, if your gown has pockets, make sure you don't have any supplies stored in them. Another important item of PPE used in dialysis is gloves. Gloves' primary purpose is to protect you by preventing contamination of your hands with blood, body fluids, and other potentially infectious materials, and to protect patients when combined with hand hygiene by preventing pathogens from contaminating your hands and then being transferred between patients. It is important to remember that gloves are not a substitute for hand hygiene. Hand hygiene should always be performed after removing gloves. Gloves should be worn appropriately by pulling them fully onto the hands. Don't wrap them around your finger or your hand to answer alarms. You don't know what contaminants could be on the machine. Remember to change your gloves and perform hand hygiene between each patient and during care of a single patient when gloves become dirty with blood, body fluids, or other contaminated fluids such as spent dialysate. Depending on your facility's policies and the type of care you are providing, you may wear a combination of face masks and eye protection or full face shields to protect yourself. These help protect your mucous membranes from contact with infectious material from patients or from potentially contaminated fluids. 
it's important that they cover your nose, mouth, and eyes completely. A few important things to remember when considering face masks and eye protection is that face masks should fit snugly against the face, fully covering your nose and mouth. Cloth face mask coverings are not considered PPE. And face shields or goggles need to completely protect your eyes. Face shields should cover the front and sides of the face and personal glasses or contact lenses are not considered adequate eye protection. It's important to recognize the difference between a face mask and an N95 respirator. The face mask fits loosely over the face and the N95 respirator filters the air and provides a seal around the face, but must be fit tested prior to use. So we've talked about everyday PPE that is worn in dialysis. So now let's turn our attention to the PPE that should be worn when caring for patients with suspected or confirmed COVID-19. As someone caring for patients, what do you need to know? COVID-19 is the abbreviation for Coronavirus Disease 2019. CO stands for Corona, VI stands for Virus, D stands for Disease, and 19 refers to the year 2019, when this new coronavirus was first identified. There are many human coronaviruses, including some that commonly cause mild upper respiratory tract illnesses, like the common cold. COVID-19 is a new disease caused by a new coronavirus that has not previously been seen in humans. The virus that causes COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2, is capable of spreading easily in the community or community spread, meaning people have become infected with the virus in an area, including some who are not even sure how or where they became infected. There are some affected areas where this is happening right now. COVID-19 is a new disease and we are still learning how it spreads. But to our knowledge, person to person is the main way this disease spreads, between people in close contact with one another, about six feet, through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person speaks, coughs, or sneezes. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby or possibly be inhaled into the lungs. Some recent studies have suggested that COVID-19 may be spread by people who are not showing symptoms. Another way the virus is spread is through contact with contaminated surfaces or objects. It may be possible to get COVID-19 by touching surfaces and then touching your nose, mouth, or eyes. CDC continues to study the spread and effects of the novel coronavirus across the United States. We know from recent studies that a significant portion of individu individuals with COVID-19 lack symptoms, and that even those who eventually develop symptoms can transmit the virus to others before showing symptoms. This means that the virus can spread between people interacting in close proximity. For example, when speaking, coughing, or sneezing, even if those people are not exhibiting symptoms. In light of this new evidence, CDC recommends that everyone wear face coverings in public settings where or other social distancing measures are difficult to maintain for source control. It is critical to emphasize here that masking does not replace social distancing. Maintaining a six foot distance from others remains important to slowing the spread of the virus as well. So what does that mean for outpatient dialysis? Everyone in the facility, including patients, visitors, and staff, should practice source control. For patients and caregivers, we need to make sure they are educated on what source control means. Teach them to use cloth face coverings every time they leave their home to prevent transmission of COVID-19. This includes during dialysis treatments as well as any other times they leave the home and go out into the community. Frontline staff such as yourself and your family members should also follow universal source control when going out into the community. When you come to work, follow your facility protocol on what kind of face covering you need to wear when you enter the facility and clarify what needs to be done when you leave. Cloth face coverings are not PPE and should not be worn in place of needed PPE, such as a respirator or a face mask, when you are at work and performing tasks that require this level of protection. Face masks, if available, should be reserved for staff. 
Let's take a look at the current guidance on PPE. Healthcare providers caring for patients with suspected or confirmed COVID-19 should use all of the following. An N95 or higher level respirator or a face mask if a respirator is not available. A cloth face covering is not considered PPE and should not be worn by healthcare workers when PPE is indicated. Respirators should be worn by fit tested personnel in the context of a respiratory protection program. Eye protection or goggles, a disposable face shield that covers the front and sides of the face, and personal glasses and contact lenses are not considered adequate eye protection. Gloves and an isolation gown. The isolation gown should be worn over or instead of the cover gown, like a lab coat that's normally worn by hemodialysis personnel. If there are shortages of gowns, they should be prioritized for initiating and terminating dialysis treatment, manipulating access needles or catheters, and helping the patient into and out of the station or cleaning and disinfecting the patient care equipment and the dialysis station. When gowns are removed, place the gown in a dedicated container for waste or linen before leaving the dialysis station. Disposable gowns should be discarded after use. Cloth gowns should be laundered after each use. Picture here are two examples of frontline staff who are ready to care for a COVID-19 patient. They have on their isolation gown, which can be either on top of their regular dialysis gown or over their regular scrubs. One pair of clean gloves, a face shield or goggles, and a respirator or a face mask. You can visit the link on the bottom of the screen to learn more. There are a few important things to note when considering how we put on or don or take off, doff PPE. Make sure to perform hand hygiene before donning PPE. PPE must remain in place and be worn correctly for the duration of work in potentially contaminated areas. This means that PPE should not be adjusted during patient care. Actions such as retying the gown or adjusting the respirator or face mask need to be avoided. PPE must be removed slowly and deliberately in a sequence that prevents self-contamination. A step-by-step -step process should be followed to assure that enough time and space are available to accomplish this. Although more than one donning and doffing method may be acceptable, the next two videos will show one example it is critical that you follow your healthcare facilities procedure for donning and doffing PPE. Also, please keep in mind that facilities implementing reuse or extended use of PPE will need to adjust their donning and doffing procedures to accommodate these practices. So let's start with donning. First, identify and gather the proper PPE to don, including an appropriately fitted isolation gown, a NIOSH approved N95 filtering face piece respirator or higher level respiratory protection, or if a respirator is not available, a face mask, a face shield or goggles, and a pair of disposable patient examination gloves. Perform hand hygiene by using alcohol-based hand sanitizer or washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Put on the isolation gown. Tie all ties or snap all snaps. You may need assistance from another healthcare provider. Put on the N95 respirator. When using a respirator with a nose piece, fit it to your nose using both hands. Do not bend or tent the respirator. Extend the respirator under your chin, protecting both your mouth and nose. Pull the top strap over your head, placing it on the crown. Then pull the bottom strap over your head, placing it at the base of your neck. Lastly, perform a user seal check. Do this by using your hands to cover the surface of the respirator and gently exhale, checking that the face piece bulges slightly. Then, 
While keeping your hands over the respirator, take in a quick, deep breath, checking that the face piece collapses slightly. If air escapes through the edges, readjust the fit of your respirator and perform another user seal check. Do this each time you put the respirator on. If a respirator is not available, put on a face mask. Extend the face mask under your chin, protecting both your mouth and nose. If the mask has loops, hook them around your ears. If it has ties, secure them at the base of your neck and crown of your head. Next, put on a face shield or goggles. Once again, perform hand hygiene. Lastly, put on your gloves. Pull the gloves down so that they cover the wrist of the gown. You are now ready to enter the patient's room. And now let's talk about doffing. Remove and discard your gloves. Gloves can be removed using more than one technique. For the glove and glove technique, pinch the outside of the glove near the wrist. Peel downwards, pulling the glove inside out. With your ungloved hand, Slide your finger under the wrist of your remaining glove. Again, peel downwards, turning the glove inside out. Discard the gloves. For the beaking method, pinch the outside of the glove near the wrist. Using your finger, pull the glove inside out and over the fingers and thumb to form a beak. With the beaked hand, pinch the opposite glove at the wrist and pull downwards turning the glove inside out. With the ungloved hand, pull the beaked glove off, touching only the inside of the glove. Next, remove your gown. Untie all ties or unsnap all snaps. Some gown ties can be broken rather than untied. In that instance, break the ties gently, avoiding a forceful movement. Reach up to the shoulders and carefully pull or roll the gown down and away from the body. Dispose of the used gown. You may now exit the patient's room. Perform hand hygiene by using alcohol-based hand sanitizer or washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Be sure to clean your wrists where the edge of the glove was located. Carefully remove the face shield or goggles by grabbing the strap and pulling upwards and away from your head. Do not touch the front of the face shield or goggles. Next, remove and discard the respirator or face mask. If you are wearing a respirator, remove the bottom strap by grabbing only the strap and bringing it carefully over your head. Grasp the top strap and bring it carefully over your head and then pull the respirator away from your face without touching the front of the respirator. If you are wearing a face mask, carefully untie the straps or unhook them from your ears and pull the mask away from your face without touching the front of the mask. Lastly, once again perform hand hygiene after removing the respirator or face mask. You have now completed the doffing procedure. And finally, don't forget, you are part of a team. Make sure you take the time to help each other out when it comes to PPE practices at your facility. Don't be afraid to speak up and ask questions. Conversations about PPE and COVID-19 are important. Working together and using your voice is the key to keeping yourself, your coworkers, and dialysis patients safe. Thank you for taking the time to watch this module and thank you for your work to keep patients on dialysis safe.